So do you like torture porn? Well then you might be in the right place. I'm sure that didn't come across as creepy at all, did it? Breeder is brought to us by director Jens Dahl and stars Sarah Yelt Diplitson, Anders, great name, Hendrickson, and Morton Holst. A ruthless businesswoman is abducting young women as part of a gruesome biohacking experiment to reverse aging. When Mia goes to investigate, she finds herself trapped, branded, and tortured in an underground medical facility. So Breeder is a genre film, that genre being grimy ass nasty torture porn. And your tolerance for this film is going to depend on the affinity you may or may not have for that genre. If you don't like those movies like Hostel and Martyrs and the like, then you're not gonna like this movie either. But if you did enjoy those kind of movies, then I think you might find something here to enjoy, you sick fuck. I mean, I like those movies too, so you're in good company. Much like those movies, this movie doesn't jump right into the icky gooey nastiness though. Well, Martyrs did, but you know, it's the exception. It's not really until about the halfway point that all that stuff starts to kick off. However, leading up to that, you know something's up. There are some odd occurrences that go on in this film that lead you to believe there is something more in store for me later on down the road. Things like our main character Mia going out to the horse stables and putting spurs on her boots and then digging those spurs into her ass as she masturbates. Yeah, it's that kind of movie. But hey, I'm not here to judge people's sexual proclivities. You do you, boo. This movie is drenched in an uneasy tension. From pretty much the beginning of the movie, even though all that nasty stuff isn't happening yet, there's still this air of unease the entire time. You know something's going on. Our main character knows something's going on. You don't know exactly what it is yet, but believe me, you're gonna find out. And wow, it's... It's something. There's some imagery in this movie that a lot of people are going to be very caught off guard by. A lot of people are just going to be outright disgusted by. Later in the film, the movie does not hold back much. There are some things that it shows that you don't typically see in other movies. Is it the most graphic and nasty movie I've ever seen? No, not really. I mean, we've seen worse in films. But the tone of this movie and the just absolute brutality of some of the acts in it is very unsettled. Regardless of how you feel about the content of this film and how you feel about the story, you cannot deny that it has a wonderful tone. Wonderful in the way that it makes you feel extremely uneasy from beginning to end. They nailed that shit. Now from a story perspective, it's interesting. I can't say this is like the best story I've ever seen, but it is interesting enough to follow. I think the biggest question is if you took out all the graphic stuff from the end of the film, like we didn't see that, it wasn't a torture porn extravaganza, what would this film be left with? Would the story be strong enough to carry the film all the way to the end? And the answer is... Probably not. The story's not bad, but it definitely benefits from a lot of that shock factor we get in the second half. The filmmakers very much subscribe to the show, not tell philosophy in this movie. And they show you a lot. Now that being said, while the things that they show us are just really bad at times, the themes that are going on, especially in the second half of the movie, are pretty fucked up too. We don't ever get it like 100% explained to us, but they do show us enough for us to figure out basically what's going on in this facility. And yeah, it's... It's not nice. Honestly, the beginning parts of the film are probably more interesting story-wise than the second half of the film. The second half of the film doesn't really tell much more of a story. Yeah, we get the end and there is story beats there, but most of it is just showing this horrific situation and the fucked up shit that these people are having to go through. You know, torture porn. And I'm not really gonna rag on the movie too much for that because that's what it set itself up as. It never lied to us. It never made us think that it was trying to be something else. That's what they set out to do and hey, they did it. Now, that being said, even though they set out to do a thing and they did succeed at it, does that make the movie entertaining? Yeah, to some, this movie will be entertaining. If you're into these kind of movies, like I said, you're gonna find something to enjoy here. But to the vast majority of people out there, no, I don't think they're gonna find a whole lot to enjoy here. In fact, enjoyment is not really the word that comes to mind when this movie comes up. There's some pretty fucked up things that happen in this movie, okay? Now, I mean, I was entertained. I'm not gonna lie. Was this the best movie or even the best movie in this genre that I've ever seen? No, it wasn't. But it was fairly entertaining. I didn't hate my time with it. I'll probably never go back and watch it again, but while I watched it, I had a decent enough time with it. The movie does at some points try and have a bit of commentary and have something to say. It raises some questions for sure, but it never really follows that through and goes anywhere with it. And the ending of the movie, yeah, that was a choice. Not saying it was bad, but... Yeah, it was a choice. 
and it was a choice that some people are gonna feel kind of unfulfilled with. Performance wise, everybody does a pretty good job here. For the most part, these performances fall into two different categories. We have sadistic fuckheads that are doing terrible things to people and acting like psychos, and then we have people that sadistic fuckheads are doing things to, being absolutely terrified for extremely long periods of time. Both categories did a pretty good job overall. The psychos seemed very fucking psycho. The terrified people seemed like they were scared shitless. Our three main characters, Mia Thomas and Dr. Rubin, have the most potential to be the most interesting characters in the movie. There's a lot set up with these characters. They are presented to us with a lot of things that make us interested in them. It just doesn't really follow through with a lot of that. We don't really learn a whole lot more about them. Mia and Thomas's relationship does have some really interesting things that we learn in the beginning of the movie, but like I said, it never really totally follows through with that. We do actually want to know more about what's going on with these two. We also want to know more about Dr. Rubin. We just never get answers to this stuff. The story is developing along as the movie goes on, but once it gets to that point, about halfway through to that torture porn point, that's just all the movie is moving forward. We get torture porn, a little bit of commentary, more torture porn in the movie. And while admittedly there is entertainment value in that, it's not as much as the movie initially set up. I really wanted to know more about these things that they set up in the beginning of the movie, and unfortunately we just don't ever get it. Now on the effects front, the movie does a really good job with the one effect that anybody watching this kind of movie cares about, the blood and gore. It is all practical and it all looks really good. This movie is nasty as fuck and everything it shows looks realistic and nasty. If you like your horror torture porn to be icky, gooey, nasty, and really just disgusting, then you will be in good company here. There's one prosthetic in particular, actually a bin full of this type of prosthetic near the end of the movie, that is in particularly realistic looking and pretty fucking disturbing and disgusting. I know it sounds like I'm being negative about these things to the movie, but it is what it is. These are some really nasty ass effects, but that was what the movie was going for, so they were successful in that. So if you're a gore hound, you're gonna find a whole lot here to like. The red stuff flows, and it is pretty glorious as far as this type of thing goes. Guys, Breeder was an entertaining genre film, if you're into that kind of genre. It sets up an interesting story that I was actually gripped by. I wanted to know more about these characters. Unfortunately, it doesn't totally pay off in that right. However, to make up for that, instead what we get is extended torture porn scenes for the second half of the film. And if that's your thing, then you're really gonna enjoy this. And we also get some really great performances from our leads. And while this movie is definitely not gonna be for most people, if you are into the whole torture porn genre, you're gonna find something here to like, and it is absolutely worth a rent. All he wanted was hey, this. To return some videotape. I'm not ashamed to admit that I kind of like this movie. It's far from perfect and it's got some really fucked up things that happen in it, but at the end of the day, I enjoy these kind of movies for what they are. So if you're into this genre, then check out Breeder one night. I think you're gonna have a bloody good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of Breeder. If you enjoyed, want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Khan. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Denmark. So I've been noticing that a lot of these types of movies take place in Europe. Like this is in Denmark, Martyrs was in France, and Hostel was in wherever the fuck it took place. And I love Europe, I really like it over there, but this genre is really making me never want to fucking go back there again. I feel like if I go over there I'm gonna end up in like a bathroom of a dingy ass basement of some old ass factory with my legs cut off, my foreskin attached to my fucking forehead or something. Not a good look!